Hello, so here we are again looking at the MySair Aviation simulation of the Garmin G1000 cockpit. But as a quick review from our last video, let's talk about what we've seen before. We introduced you to the basic layout of the G1000 cockpit. There's the PFD, or the primary flight display. There's the MFD, or multifunction display. And then there's the audio panel in the middle. The PFD displays the basic flight information you need to fly the airplane. The MFD does a lot of things, but for most of the time, it displays a set of engine instruments here on the left side and a large GPS map on the right side. So with that in mind, let's start looking at the PFD in more detail. As you recall from the earlier videos, we can click right in the middle of the PFD screen to pop up a larger version of the unit and we can click in the middle again to make it go away. So let's go with the larger version. Let's focus in up here across the top where we see a lot of radio frequencies listed. Starting on the left hand side you see our NAV1 and our NAV2 frequencies. The frequencies on the left side where this blue box is here and this one here, these are the frequencies that you tune but they're in standby. They don't become active. In other words, that's not the fr that frequency is not in use until you toggle this frequency over to this side, at which time it becomes the active frequency. Same thing is true over here on the COM side. We have COM1 and COM2. The side where this blue box is, or cyan, I guess it's called, um, officially that's called the tuning cursor. The side where the tuning cursor is, here and here, is the standby side, but that's the side you can change dynamically with your knob. And then when you're ready to activate that frequency, you move it over to the other side towards the center, and then it becomes the active frequency. The area in the middle here is your GPS information area. If you've entered a direct two-way point or you have a flight plan entered into the G1000, Information about the specific waypoint you're tracking towards right now will be displayed up here in this section of the screen. So basically we've got the navigational radios here, the comm radios here, and your GPS section here. So while we're here in this section, let's talk about how you move frequencies from standby into active. Most frequently you're going to be using the comm radio. So let's look at the COM knob because there's an important aspect of this knob and how you use it in the Mindstar G1000 that makes it a lot easier to work the simulation. As many of you may already know, the Garmin G1000's knobs are dual axis knobs. So there's an outer portion of the knob that you can turn and there's an inner portion of the knob. And in many cases, you can actually click the center of the inner knob and you get a, yet another function available to you. We're going to be operating these two knobs, the inner and outer comm knobs, and we're going to be paying attention to this section of the G1000 display. All we need to do to change that frequency to another frequency, let's say we're going to change it to 123.0. We use the outer knob to change the megahertz portion of the display, and we use the inner knob to change the kilohertz section of the display. Now, in many flight simulator avionics, you'll find places where you have to click and you have to find the click spots somewhere in the middle of all these knobs and buttons to figure out what you're supposed to click on. But the Mindstar Aviation G1000 allows you to use your mouse wheel as the knob. So all you have to do is hover your mouse pointer just outside the perimeter of the knob to activate the outer mouse wheel. So all I'm doing is moving my mouse wheel up and down and that simulates turning that knob. So we can put in 123.0 right there. If I want to change the kilohertz portion of that standby frequency, all I have to do is roll my mouse wheel while my cursor is hovering over the center of the knob. So let's go to 123.0 like this and now we've got it tuned in in the standby frequency. It does not become the active frequency until I push the frequency toggle button. When I push this button, 
123.0 becomes the active frequency over here on the right side, and what used to be over here switches back over into the standby side where I can change it if I want to. Once a frequency is over here in the active side, you can't change it directly. You can only change what's over here on the standby side and then activate it. Now, you may also notice that there's the COM2 line down here. Well, how would we change a frequency in the COM2 radio? Well, what you do is you put your cursor or your finger, in the case of the real airplane, right in the middle of the COM knob and you press it. And what that does is it moves the tuning cursor from COM1 to COM2. And then from here, we can tune in any frequency we want, push the toggle button, and that's going to move this frequency, 125.92, over into the active side and bring 119.9 over into the standby side. So when I click toggle, it's flip-flopped those two frequencies. That's the basics of how you work frequencies in the G1000. The exact same thing is true over here on the nav side. The nav tuning knob tunes the frequency that's highlighted by the tuning cursor, and then the toggle button moves that frequency over into the active side. Pressing the middle of the nav knob moves the tuning cursor up and down to nav 1 or nav 2, allowing you to adjust whichever one you want to change. So that's a basic overview of frequency selections in the G1000. Let's look in the middle a little bit now in the flight instrumentation section. On the left side here is your airspeed indicator. And there's a little magnified window here that shows you the specific airspeed you're flying at. But you can also get a basic idea of where you are by looking at the tape itself. Moving over to the right hand side, we have the altimeter. Again, the higher altitudes are above, the lower altitudes are below, and there's a magnifying glass right here in the middle that shows you your specific altitude where you're at right this moment. And just like all altimeters, it's based on altitude above sea level, assuming you have your proper barometric pressure set down here in the Colesman window. 